Hello, friends, and welcome back to Malicious Compliance Stories. How is it these people never absorb the kindergarten lesson of keeping your hands to yourself? If our OP were a returning vet or a rape survivor, she could have easily triggered a violent episode. She's lucky OP only unleashed verbally. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. Just because I'm in a shirt and tie doesn't make me a effing manager. In a former life, I worked in a corporate-ish IT sales position for a small but very successful company that specialized in servicing the financial industry, yet wanted to start a new division that specialized in a different market with a complex set of digital compliance issues, and I absolutely loved the challenge. Until I realized that what they wanted me to do, the way they wanted it done, was impossible. During this time, I drive all over North Central Florida, and one of the only benefits of living in drained swamp country is a grocery chain named Publix, famous for the line of sandwiches commonly referred to as a pub sub, and some delicious hot and spicy chicken wings which I frequently eat to this day. The funny thing is, any man that walks into this Publix in a shirt and tie, but not if in a suit or sports coat, would probably be confused with a manager due to their dress code. It happened so much, it was just commonplace. I usually just laughed until this crap went down. The following encounter happened in 2016. Me equals me, EAB equals entitled AB. While walking into this Publix, I feel a bony talon poking me in my shoulder blade. I turn to find a Curanosaurus, very easy to spot by her faded blonde dye job, fading good looks, costume gold and diamond studded jewelry, and Kato bought clothes small town chain store in the south that seems to cater to this market like a city trends except for b word stuck up middle-aged white women and some basic a white middle manager looking dude i hated her on sight eab hey you mr store manager excuse me someone banged a grocery cart into my brand new suburban what is Publix gonna do about that at the time, I was 5'9", 200 pounds, yet still had my I-used-to-lift bro bulk, so I didn't look like a lard butt, more like a close-shaved, bald-headed, white biker dude heading to court, especially if I had my contacts in and sunglasses on. Me. What? I had just put in my resignation via work email in the parking lot. I had no job lined up, but I couldn't keep being paid for a job I couldn't complete. I was reeling from failure and bruised ego and just wanted some GD hot and spicy chicken wings, my go-to comfort food, eat them in the parking lot, and then drive about 40 miles home. I could have handled this better, way better, but I didn't. EAB. What do they pay you for, loser? Do your effing job and help me. This hit me deep. It was like her bony talon metaphysically pierced my broken heart and hit the most sensitive nerve in my wounded male ego. And I actually teared up, just quietly said, I don't work here. Don't touch me or talk to me again. And turned to walk away. When she screeched something I didn't care enough to remember and started following me inside, all I remember is making it 10 or so feet inside the store, her harpy butt screeching, the confused voices of the employees at the service desk asking her what her malfunction was. Then something she said was the back-breaking straw, and I swung around and unloaded on her. I'm not even going to try to remember what I said, but it was at the top of my lungs and basically me. Listen here, Thunder Bee. I have you on camera poking me repeatedly. If you don't shut your effing mouth, I'll press charges for assault. Not very proud of that. I've never hit a woman in my life, but I wanted to beat her with my words. Nothing happened after that. A guy she was with postured up at me. I just stared him down rather quickly. I probably looked like a complete psycho. If he knew I hadn't fought since 1994 and still felt guilty for the fallout that guy took from me whipping his butt, he probably would have swung on me. I haven't told this to anyone in four years. Just felt like finally sharing. And our second story. Manager tries to make life difficult for me, doesn't know as per my contract it benefits me. This happened a couple of years ago. I was working on a part-time basis in a small firm owned by friends. Pay was not very good, but the atmosphere was, and I was allowed to set my own timing, so life was good overall. 
Then a friend whom I only knew through social media approached me for a job at her company. Even though they were offering good money, I turned down the offer as I knew I could not get the benefits I was getting in my current job, plus the commute to the new office was very long, I'd have to travel two hours one way and change three trains just to reach the office. A month later, the HR of the new firm approached me again. They offered me almost four times the money I was making, and I could set my own work hours. There was also extra pay for working overtime and on weekends. So it's important. I joined the new company. My friend did not know the terms of the new agreement I had with HR. She used to act like I owed her big time for the opportunity I got. So one day I corrected her. I told her that I'd turned down the offer she'd been a part of, and one month later, I'd had my own negotiations, and I got much more favorable terms. So here I was because her company really needed me, and not because of her. I didn't share the details of my agreement with her, but we both realized that she was making significantly less than me. This totally changed her attitude towards me. Now she wanted me out, and I was determined to stick through for at least a year. So she decided that she would make it very difficult for me to work so that I quit on my own. There are a lot of stories I have about how she tried every trick in the book to make me quit. I'm sharing some of them here. She was my manager and was in charge of allocating work. Malicious compliance, one. She started piling on more work on me than any other member of the team. I was happy to comply. She didn't know that as part of my contract, I would be paid one and a half times the hourly rate for every hour I worked overtime and two times the hourly rate if any work was allocated to me over weekends or holidays. Every time she tried to ruin my weekend by calling me to the office unnecessarily, I happily complied. This continued till the time I left the organization and I told her how much extra money she'd helped me make. Malicious compliance too. After the long commute to work, I used to be hungry, so I developed the habit of stopping at the food court to pick up a glass of fresh fruit juice and carry it with me to work. My manager thought that this way she could harass me without actually seeming to do so, so she sent a notice that bringing liquids to office was a hazard. Ironically, she used to have coffee delivered to get desk three times a day. Well, I pointed out that the rule applied to her as well, and if I couldn't have my juice, she couldn't have her coffee. She had to literally spend an extra unpaid hour at work every time she wanted her special coffee. Meanwhile, I was happy to leisurely sit in the food court, have my glass of fresh juice with some snacks, and then begin my work day half hour later than usual. Edit 1. These two were the least of the incidents of my work life with this woman. There are a lot of comments and messages about this post, and while I'd love to answer all of them individually, since they more or less relate to the same subject, I'll add the clarifications here below. A common question people have posted is why my manager did not know my pay structure. I work in India, and here salary structure is kept strictly confidential. It can be grounds for firing to reveal or ask for someone's salary. Basically, the way the system works is that every new hire negotiates their salary on the basis of last drawn pay, experience, and qualifications. It's very common for two people working on same level to have vastly different pay structures. Overtime. Usually, people in management level do not get overtime. I had a seven-year gap in my career, and when I started working again, I chose to work in a different field. So even though I was drawing a high salary, I didn't belong to the management level. My manager was not aware of it. When she assigned me work, she assumed I would be working without pay. I owed her. No, the organization hires anyone on the basis of recommendation. They hire people on the basis of what they bring to the table, how they seem to fit into the organization's growth plans and culture. I was able to prove that I was worthwhile investment for the company. This goes out to all. If someone tells you that they did you a favor by recommending you, don't feel overly obligated. Yes, they did you a good turn, but you got the job on your own merit. Be professional at work and do not go out of your way to return perceived favors. Was she a friend? No, not towards the end. Initially, I knew her only through social media. As we worked together, I developed a friendly working relationship with her. When she began harassing me, the dynamics changed. Though I made sure that nothing in my attitude, behavior, or demeanor would give any indication of hostility from my end. Negotiations How was I able to get such a beneficial pay structure? I was working part-time before. 
The first offer I had was double my salary, but it actually worked out to the same salary structure since I would have to work full time. I took a calculator to my meeting with HR and showed them how with my increased travel cost and time spent on commute, I'd be more out of pocket taking their job. This is how I was offered OT, flexible timings, and a high base salary. Gotta love it when the manager's petty bullcrap ends up helping you in the end. And no matter how much they harass you, just grin at her and say, thanks. Kill him with kindness. And our last story, Karen's Red Line. Hey, I've got an epic tale to share with you. Picture this. It was the summer of 20, and I had just returned from a blissful vacation, ready to unwind in the comfort of my own home. Little did I know that my serene retreat would soon turn into a thrilling legal battle. Buckle up, folks. This is the story of how my neighbor tried to build a sewage system on my land near the river and how I outsmarted her with squeaky bags and a hefty lawsuit. Let's start at the beginning. You know that feeling when you step off a plane and reality comes rushing back like a freight train? Well, that's precisely what happened to me when I arrived home. As I strolled along the path that led to my backyard, something seemed off. There, right in the middle of my property, was a suspicious-looking new pipe. And it certainly wasn't there when I left for vacation. Cue the ominous music. Instantly, my mind went into detective mode. I followed the pipe's trail, and to my dismay, it led straight toward the river. It didn't take a genius to figure out what my neighbor was up to. She had brazenly decided to construct her own private sewage system, utilizing my land as the dumping ground. Oh, the holy crap. I knew that getting my land back would be no big deal, and I didn't understand what Karen was hoping for, but now I needed to close the river flooding problem. Refusing to let my neighbor's clandestine plans go unchecked, I sprung into action. I knew I had to prevent any waste from contaminating the river, but how? That's when the brilliant, if I do say so myself, idea hit me. The bags with dirt will solve any of your problems, and I got to work. I found a well with a manhole for technical works on the way. It was slightly covered with dirt so that you could not see the exact spot, and in the evening threw their two huge bags. Take that, neighbor. Now, here's where things get juicy. I decided to take legal action against my neighbor for trespassing and encroaching on my land. Armed with photographic evidence of her ill-conceived sewage system and a strong determination for justice, I hired a top-notch lawyer and prepared for the battle of a lifetime. The courtroom became our battleground, and each side presented their case with fervor. My neighbor, clearly not one to back down easily, tried to convince the judge that the pipe was a mere misunderstanding and that she had every right to construct it. But my evidence was irrefutable, and my lawyer skillfully exposed her deceitful intentions. I think many of you would have paid good money to see the judge's expression when Karen testified. After a long and arduous trial, the judge ruled in my favor. Not only did my neighbor have to remove the pipe from my land, but she was also ordered to pay a hefty compensation for the distress and damages caused. Justice had prevailed, and the river was saved from an unwanted influx of sewage. As news of the case spread through the community, I became somewhat of a local legend. Never ceases to be mesmerized by the human stupidity and insolence of Karen. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.